They follow me. Dead people. Walt? All I want to do is cut hair and they keep dropping. Medusa Deluxe was written and directed by Thomas Herodman, who's done shorts. Check out his IMDb page for the full listing of his work. Comes to us courtesy of A24, BBC Films, and I promise you all, whenever I see BBC Films, I react to it with the good taste and maturity that everybody has come to expect from me. BBC, clearly about filmmaking, not about something else that anybody could see as totally, totally dirty. And also from Emu Pictures. And let me just say right now, if there is some footage flowing around of an Emu, an actual Emu bit, behind the camera, observing, squeaking, squawking, whatever it is that emus do, pecking at the goddamn ground, I don't goddamn know. I'm going to be disappointed, honestly, an emu behind the camera, directing the movie, what could possibly go wrong? Literally everything, because emus are a little bit weird. Speaking of weird, Medusa Deluxe, because A24 knows how to do weird. They know how to do great, they know how to do good, they know how to do a film... You know, that occasionally misses the mark, but honestly, A24, my favorite goddamn studio, then the Young Studios, this is how much I love A24, because I have a lot of their movies. I have movies such as this, and I have movies such as this. By the way, you need to check out both of these, and then check out Bo is Afraid. I still need to get on Blu-ray, <coughs> as well as movies like this, which was fucking terrific, really, really terrific, and then X. X gonna give it to you, and boy... They certainly did, as well as Pearl, the prequel to X, can't wait for Maxine, and these, Bodies, 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 and my second favorite film of last year, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. So yeah, A24. So they put some money behind this, along with BBC Films, <coughs> distribution, all that, and Thomas Herdman was given this task of basically, you know, concocting a story that was mostly in one take, or maybe it was all in one take. I don't goddamn know. Maybe it was through the miracle of editing, but done one take style where we kept following a bunch of people in the immediate aftermath of a hair <coughs> stylist contestant being killed in a pretty violent way. Even though we don't see this, we just see the aftermath and we hear people talking about it. Let's just say, eee, bit, bit gruesome when they are talking about it, and we follow each respective character. They share dialogue, then we follow them some more, then we share more dialogue, then we follow this character. Basically, it's a long play put on film. That's essentially what it is, and I'm not knocking if it sounds like I'm down on it. I'm not. It's certainly a different way to film. Not that one take, um, one take style is completely, wholeheartedly original. A few films have done that, but there's some particular skill and you know passion behind this, and Thomas Herodman, as well as the cast, did a pretty goddamn good job with a concept that really shouldn't have worked as well as it did. Now, is it perfect? No. I will say that I think it stumbles a bit into the third act, and then a lot um, by the end of the third act. <coughs> you know, then usually you have film. This is around 90, 91 minutes before the end credits start rolling. And again, not perfect, but certainly a film worth watching. And whenever A24 is on the goddamn marquee, I'm 100% going to watch it. So, you have various characters. You have Angel, <coughs> Luke, Pasqualino. I'm pretty certain I probably just butchered that right there. He gets some screen time. He's certainly not bad. You have Lilith Lesser, who was Angie. Um, need to see more of what she was in. She was pretty good on screen. You have Anita Joy Owaje, who was Timba. <coughs> And I know I've seen her before. Can't recall from where. The biggest star of this goddamn movie was the character of Cleve, Claire Perkins. I know I've seen her in stuff before, occasional <clears throat> British TV. She was a fucking goddamn delight. She was great. Not that the rest of the cast wasn't good, but whenever she was on screen from the very beginning, British swearing people <clears throat> and her talking about being dedicated to her work, really dedicated to her work in some cases, you kind of think, who maybe Cleve could have had something to do with it, considering that she's short for Cleaver, <clears throat> even though it's not spelled the same. You also have Renee, Daryl De Silva. There's another recognizable face. Inez uh, K. Alexander, another recognizable face. And Kendra, Harriet Webb, who actually seems like the most obvious choice when you really start to delve into this, that it could be her <laughs> behind this whole thing. Because there was a hairdresser named Mosca. Not Angela Mosca. No, we are not going into the deep dive of the old school wrestling war. And my God, that is an old school reference. That was way before my time. Does anybody know who the fuck Angela Mosca was? Love to hear from you. So, nevertheless, it's basically just a one-take thing and following people and stuff like that. And we, 
I, I do have a couple complaints. One, the police investigation, while still going on, you don't really see the police doing much of anything. This is a pretty big building where this <coughs> hairstyling is all taking place. And everybody's able to move around freely. Now, again, I don't know how long this whole thing has been going on, this whole investigation. But everybody can't leave, except they can wander around freely. Also, there's a weird security guard named Gak, and somebody they keep referring to as Patricio. <laughs> Patricio! That's going to offend every Italian person watching this, all three of them. And, yeah, you get the kind of cliches of people being dedicated to their crap. Maybe some people just doing whatever they're willing to do to get ahead in life. And <laughs> Good character work. I'm certainly not going to say that the movie doesn't balance stuff well. Where I think it misses the mark again is in the third act. And I'm not saying at all that this is a bad movie. It's just it it was good to great and really, really could have just stuck the landing. I don't feel it did. I also feel that uh, given certain things that happened later on in the movie, the movie could lean more into the goofy factor of the whole thing. And I think honestly probably should have been more comedy <coughs> suspense. And, and it had some comedy to it. But I think it could have been even more comedic and outlandish. Hell, they probably should have gone full-on musical and just done that, but that would have been a little bit hard to do in one take. Um, that being said, good character exchanges, good atmosphere, uh, well-filmed, well done. I'd like to see what else uh, Thomas Harriman can do. And the cast, pretty good. Again, Claire Perkins, fucking phenomenal. The highlight of this, even though there were other good characters in this as well, the character Divine, she was very good as well. Not not, not that Divine, but another char a character named Divine, played by an actress. And from there, we just continue to, you know, unravel the mystery, and it's actually pretty obvious who the fuck it is because they tipped their hand a little bit early. Now, as for the reasons and motivations, I mean, you know, we find that out a little bit later on. It's available for about seven fifty to eight bucks, depending on your taxes on Amazon. <laughs> I gladly plunk down money. I look forward to seeing what else Thomas Herodman can do in the future. Good cast, good atmosphere, well filmed, even if it didn't quite stick to landing. Three, two, one, spoilers. So Flowery talk about all of this uh, hairdressing, <coughs> all that. I did like the one-take feel. I really did like that. It gave it a cool atmosphere, like, holy shit, we're watching this unfold in real time. Um, one particular um, girl that's getting her hairstyle, Timba, she <coughs> got, um, she actually, you know, may have seen it happen. She may have not because Moscow was styling her hair. There is this whole uh, thing about, you know, one little scene about vaping between Renee and this one guy, Gak Aniseed. The, you know, Rome building their empire off of one flavor. I don't know what the hell Aniseed is. Um, I believe it was Divine that had her uh, spleen removed and now she has to have a bracelet on just in case things happen. There's this side deal with Angel and Mosca. They were together. They actually have a, um, they actually have a kid. And also Renee also had something with Moscow. Moscow apparently was sleeping around with a whole lot of people, it seems, or at least all that was implied. It was never shown, except for one particular person later. And then um, when Renee is talking to Angel a little bit later, he's able to leave the building freely with the police investigating, go to meet Angel and talk to him in the car while the kid, uh, Pablo, is crying. A uh, kid they had the kid they used a surrogate uh, woman, sur 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 surrogate woman, obviously not a surrogate marma, uh, marsupial, but a surrogate um, um, model that <coughs> Mosca used to uh, do hair for from 2009, and she gave birth to him. And you know what? They raised a kid properly. I, I assume um, we don't we don't actually get to see much of Mosca alive except for something a little bit later on. He uh, he's gone, and his scalp it's all gone. Yeah, because he was scalped. He, he was scalped. Holy shit, he was scalped and he was dead. Ah ha ha ha, you think so. So, we get in fighting among the uh, hairdressing peeps. <laughs> uh, Kendra apparently is doing anything to get ahead, including paying off Renee. We don't really see a lot more of that. Except there was actually one funny part with um, Cleve, uh, you know, <laughs> bum rush in the room. And trying to attack Kendra says that's P Pantene Pro V U C. I can't say that word even. It's like it, it's the British people saying the word can't. That's what I'll say. Because there are certain words that can't be said on here, otherwise I'll get flagged. It's one of my favorite insults. <laughs> she was maced with ter uh, ter uh, Trace May. 
Tresemme, Tresemme, whatever that hairspray is. I know they had shampoo. It's actually good shampoo. Expensive, though. So, Kendra being way too ambitious, almost like she could be the killer. It's it's this guy, Gak. <clears throat> Gak, G-A-C, like Yak. It's a security guard. Why did the security guard do it? Um, well, I'll get to that here in a minute. There was a... <clears throat> there was a... Divine ends up, you know, revealing that she is very kind, very absolutely 100% religious. Um, even tried to cut Pablo's hair at one point. And it's like, oh, his father just got scalped. Why would you do that? Is what Kendra's asking. Or characters were asking this stuff and it started to get a little bit jumbled. But then she's hugging Gak. Divine is in. The Lord forgives. You just have to say what you did. And then the hair ship. That's divine. That's designed on Angie's head. It's like a big old, one of those big old like. This does not look like a. It's like one of those big old cone like metal cone things, that um gets uh, that, that you know that's used for styling hair and there's a ship on it. And there was this earlier story that Cleve told, about a guy catching his hair on fire because he decided to have a smoke and he had a bunch of peroxide in his hair and the spark got in there and he died. Well, that same thing happens to Angie, and then this guy suddenly shows up while she's, uh, you know, on fire. He pushes, he puts it out with a fire extinguisher, <laughs> takes her down, and it's Patricio. Um, and from there, you know, we find out more about him. It turns out that, well, Gak isn't doing all that well. He's kind of sick. He's kind of ill. Why is he ill? He's high on pills. What kind of pills? Hmm, let's find out. Angel wants to go home to Colombia because he got wrapped up in something where him and Moscow were struggling for money. They decide we're going to go visit um, Patricio in Turkey and smuggle pills and various things over here and sell them. And then we're going to make money. See, this is where it starts to get a little bit messy, at least to me. It starts to get a little busy, and that's not bad. I just feel there were certain things the movie took its time on. So by the time we got to this, it was like, okay, this is a lot. Could we flush it? Nope, we're not going to flush this out. We're just going to move on. And again, the one take thing really works. It does help. It helps hide the fact that the story gets a little messy. To me, to me. I'm not saying that there wasn't talent behind the camera or in front of the camera. So it turns out the shipment was hair loss pills. And Gak is bald. And maybe he was trying to take those and he got really sick. Maybe he took too many of them. The shipment was just at the bottom of this building this whole goddamn time. And then, suddenly, Angel is like, oh, well, Patricio did this, and now I'm going to go, and I'm going to go into this room where there's this chair, this light, and suddenly, <clears throat> this gospel choir is singing. And it turns out, <laughs> we move straight to the memorial. So either it's a fever dream or something really, really weird happened, but it's a memorial... I, I actually wrote, did I completely stroke out for a few minutes? What's happening? Um, Gak actually didn't kill him. It turns out that Mosca died. He had a diabetic reaction to something. To the pills, to possibly not taking his shot. It forms a diabetic. Um, but he did cut take his hair because Gak and Mosca got together for a little bit. Why? Why not? Maybe he thought he could do something with him. Maybe he liked his shiny bald head. And Gak then didn't call anybody. Didn't call the authorities. This is all being, you know, said in overlaying narration of investigation. That wasn't planned to rhyme, but I do have the time. And it he, he took his hair. Why did he take his hair? As something to remember him by? A, a cut and pull was something that was referenced. Uh, earlier in the movie, and that's what he said. And then we cut to a musical number with all the cast dancing and everything. And Yeah, I can certainly say that this movie is very unique and very <clears throat> stylish. And again, even if it didn't stick to landing, I look forward to seeing what else Thomas Herodman could do. Good stuff. A24 with another pretty damn good offering. B+. Plus. I think it's a B+. Plus. It's right up there with Landscape with Invisible Hand, which is another movie you should check out. It's in theaters currently, but it it's really good, unique idea, unique style, cool way it does it. <laughs> Even though everything doesn't quite come together, it comes together enough to basically be definitely something I recommend. So yes, B-plus for Medusa Deluxe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rifflin. I'll see you soon.